So today we're going to make a maze. That sounds amazing. So when you, so when the mouse moves into the wall or anywhere, it restarts. And mm -hmm. the point of the game is you have to try to program a mouse to walk all the way to the, to eat his cheesy puffs. All right. That sounds exciting. Let's get started. All right, so here we are. We're creating a new one, and uh, we're gonna do a couple of things. Um, so today, just like yesterday, we're gonna use um, key press events. Where did we find those again? They weren't they um, here? Um, oh, control? Control? Good guess. No, events. Events. So when the clicked one, are we gonna do a space one today? Well, we'll use the one that says when the space is pressed. Okay. Okay, and we're gonna use our arrow keys to move um, well, right now it's a cat. We should change it to a mouse. Yeah, so, yeah, so we're going to go and delete the cat. You know what? If we delete the cat, we'll delete our code. Is that what you want to do? Okay. I guess you did it. All right, so let's delete the cat. Okay, so you hit the um, choose a new sprite button. Okay. And just in the search bar, type mouse. M-O-U-S-E. M-O-U-S-E. Okay. Mouse one. <laughs> yeah, He's and fine. then you click it. When you click on costumes, you'll notice your mouse has two different costumes already. And when you kind of click between each costume, you can see it makes him look like he's walking. All right, so I'm going to go back to my code. All right, remind me again. If I want uh, to do something when I press a key, where is that? Um, events. And okay. there's the second one. So we'll events. say when space key is pressed. We're going to change that from the space key to, to up arrow. Up arrow. Sounds good. So when up arrow is pressed, we're going to start by having him, when we press the up arrow, he's going to change his costume. So where would we look for that? Um, looks. Looks. That's yes. right. Yes. And there's a block called next costume. So I'm just going to drop that right there. And then I'm going to tap my up arrow a bunch of times and watch what happens to my mouse. Oh, awesome. Looks like he's walking, so we're animating that sprite. Cool, huh? Tra yeah. Tap your up arrow a bunch. Look at that. Yeah, I see. Okay. And the faster you click it, the faster he walks. You got it. The next thing we're going to have him do is when we push up, we want him to face up. So that's under... Motion? Motion. Dad, look, look how fast he's going. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll do the... We'll get the one that says point in direction. Do you guys see that one? Point in direction where the 90 is. Yeah, 90. So I don't know if you guys have learned about degrees yet in school. Have you learned about degrees? No. No? But I know what degrees is. Okay. So a circle is split up into little parts. It's split up into degrees as you work your way around the circle. Okay? And there are 300 and... There are 360 degrees in a circle, okay? So I'm going to click where it says 90, and you can see that arrow there. Oh, I can gosh. just pick up the arrow, and I'm going to drag it all the way to the top. And the top, it, it kind of looks like a clock, eh? But the oh, top yeah. of our clock is zero degrees, okay? The top of our circle pointing up is zero degrees, okay? So now try pushing the up button on your keyboard, and your mouse points up, and he wiggles his legs, okay? Oh, cool. We also want him to move a certain amount so when we push up. Ten steps one now. Yeah, so we'll grab the move ten steps. Click that right there. Yeah, and now he'll start moving up, right? Let me see. Oh my! Okay. I still can't. Oof, 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 oof. Now we're gonna make a variable to remember how many steps our mouse is gonna take. <laughs> my mouse is stuck. Yeah, your mouse is stuck up there now. That's okay. We'll get them down when we get the other arrows working. Now we're gonna uh, we're gonna create a variable to remember how many steps our mouse takes. Instead of writing the word number ten here, we're gonna have a variable to help us remember that. So do you see the word variables? Yes. Variables are just a way for your computer to remember something. We're gonna make a variable, and it's gonna be called steps. Okay. And all that means is the number of steps he, he can take every time he takes a step. Okay. Now, we don't need to create this for all sprites. We, we can, and it wouldn't change a whole lot. But right now, these steps only have to do with our mouse. So we'll say for this mouse only. If you make a mistake and at this point, it doesn't matter. That's the first time that we've clicked like a different one. Yeah. In all our videos. The reason you do that is because you want... Um, 
you want the the information doesn't need to be known beyond the scope of the mouse and that's just a computer programming thing that uh, we're just going to do and it doesn't really matter but we're going to do it we're going to say okay so kind of being... so these steps have to do only with our mouse maybe we'd make a, a cat later on and it would also have steps and it might have a different set of steps maybe a cat could run faster than a mouse all right right now it displays the steps on the screen uh, we're going to uncheck that because we don't need to see that this is not like a scoreboard like it was before so we're going to uncheck that now we don't see it anymore and the other thing we're going to do we're going to grab this where it says steps do you see it yep and we're going to replace the number 10 with steps with our variable okay move steps steps now right now <laughs> yeah move steps steps isn't that funny That's weird. <laughs> sounds like you got a stutter there quinn ha ah. Steps, steps. Move steps, steps. Okay, um, we're gonna go under control and we're gonna say, we need a, sorry, we're gonna go under events and we're gonna say, when the flag is pressed. When the flag is pressed. Okay, we're gonna bring that out. And just like yesterday, we're gonna make a my block, okay? Yay. We want our mouse to return to the start and everything to reset for the mouse if we run into our maze wall. So instead of, Doing it all here, we're going to make a block. So we'll hit make a block and we're going to call it start. Yay. Okay. And we'll say, okay. Wait, I'm not done. And now that we put the start, whoa, that's, how come, how come Daddy this, how write start? How come this start S block right? S-T-A-R-T. How come this start block is smaller than this start block? I don't know, because this is defining the start block. And that is the name of the block. So we're going to say, uh, when the flag is pressed, start. All right, so let's define all the things we want to happen when we start. We want to set the speed of our mouse. So we're going to go yeah. under variables. Okay. And we'll say, set my variable to zero. We're going to grab that, drop it under start, our subroutine, which is start. We're going to say, set my variable to change that to steps. And let's set it to four steps. Okay, so now when your mouse moves, it will move four steps at a time. All right. Oh, I didn't push my flag. There we go. The other thing we're going to do is our mouse is kind of too big. So I'm going to say when we start things off, we want to shrink our mouse down. So I'll go to looks. I'm going to say set size to... And I'm going to say 40%. Where does it say set size by? Set size by or set size? Set size 2. And I'll drop that in there. And I'm going to say 40%. Oh, God. I can't even see mine anymore. Yeah, you shrunk these off top. Don't worry. We'll define some of those other arrows. We'll be able to find your mouse again. I promise. Bye, mousey. And the other thing we're going to want our, to do is we want our mouse to face right when he starts. So we're going to go into motion again. And we're going to say point in direction 90 and drop that under our subroutine start as well, my block. When we push flag, it should make him shrink and he should face um, the right hand side of your screen or 90 degrees if we're thinking about a circle. I don't know if mine's working or not. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to drag our mouse to this corner. And, uh, and then we're going to grab a block that says glide one second 2xy and we'll drop that one there that? so that means that when everything starts our mouse will glide back to the start okay we're going to draw the maze around our mouse in a bit okay does that make sense yeah so he glides to the start uh he points in direction 90 he shrinks to size 40 and we set up our initial conditions that he moves four steps at, at a time now, whenever I use arrow keys in my code, I like to arrange them. Down? I like to arrange them so I've got my up here, and then when I do down, I do it below there. So if this is the code for my up arrow, watch what I can do. This is pretty handy. So I can right click on this and choose duplicate. Oh, yeah. Now I can just drag that down here. And there are two things I'm going to change for my down arrow. So check this out. The up arrow thing? Yeah, the up arrow I'm going to change to down arrow. And point in direction, I'm going to change by dragging it down like that. Down is 180 degrees. Okay. Someone right. 
Yeah, the other way you can do it, that's right, Quinn, is just type 180. Now, look, it works. Okay. I can... Yeah, so now our mouse should be able to move up and down, but he can't move left and right. Daddy, look at him. Yeah. I want to do the same code for right. Who wants to walk us through how to do the right arrow? Liam, um, why don't you do that? So we're going to right click it again and then tap the duplicate again. Okay, and then we're going to change that to right arrow. And then we're going to change that to the right side. Or you can type in 90. Oh, you already figured it out, huh? Cool, yeah. 90 degrees. So go into the right side and the circle is 90 degrees. So I'll do the same thing. Hey, look, now he can go right. Daddy, look, he's going right. Okay, yeah, give it a test. Make sure it works. All right, Quinn, it's your turn. I want you to walk us through doing the left arrow. Okay, so you're going to duplicate it again mm -hmm. and drag it up wherever you have room. And then put, click on the right arrow and push left arrow. And then change the 90 degree to... No, minus 90. Minus or, 90. Yeah. It's minus 90. Can I tell you something else? It's also 270 degrees. Yes, it works. Okay. It works, Dad. All right, so let's find it. Right, left, up, down. We got a mouse that moves around. Sound good? Yeah. All right. So I got my left. I got my right. So what we're going to do now is this is the point where we're going to draw ourselves a maze. I'm going to push my flag to start over again. And I'm going to show you how to do this. And then we'll kind of fast forward through while everyone draws their maze. Because it's going to take you guys and me a little bit longer to do this. And it might make for a bit of a boring video. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over to my stage. I'm going to hover over this. And I'm going to pick the paintbrush because I want to paint my own stage. Under fill, I'm going to click there. And I don't want to have a fill. So that is what this red line, red diagonal line means. It means it means no fill. So I'm going to choose that. Okay. All right. My outline is black and that's going to work great. So I'm going to start off drawing a big rectangle over my whole stage. And that's sort of like the bounding outside box of my maze. I'm going to grab my eraser tool and I'm going to erase maybe a spot at the start where the mouse comes in and a spot at the bottom where the mouse goes out. And then I'm just gonna use this line tool here. And I, I like to work backwards. So if my mouse starts up here in this corner, I wanna get them down here to the end where we're gonna put some cheesy poofs in a minute. One thing I'll say is you gotta make sure there's a route from the start to the end, and it can't be too narrow because your mouse has to be able to fit through and you have to give them enough room to get around corners. So I'm gonna do something like this. You can be more creative and you can always go back and change your maze if you need to. Okay, so I'm just going to make a maze. It's not going to be overly complicated here. I'll put some dead ends in it maybe. My eraser only erases. Oh, Daddy, maybe we can put some cats in there My that eats the mouses. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's something you could do uh, maybe afterwards. I think that's a great yeah. idea, Quinn. Like, if you go and hit the cat, it makes you restart. Yeah, okay, so my maze is not too complicated. Uh, you guys can have fun making a more complicated maze. And if your maze gets too complicated, you might have to make your mouse smaller. Okay? So you guys go ahead and draw your oh, maze. If you hold shift while you draw your lines, they'll be straight. So I can have diagonal and wiggly lines. But if I want them to click at um, 45 degree Daddy. intervals, I can hold shift while I draw them. Okay? Daddy, it won't. It, it made a mistake. How do I delete it? So no big deal. No big deal if you make a mistake. Oh, you you can use this undo button right up here to undo it, okay? Ooh. Where's the undo button? Undo. This little loop, okay? Undo is your best pal. All right. No, oh, so it. you've drawn your maze. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add something to our maze for our mouse to get. So I'm going to click back on my mouse for a second. You can see there he is at the start of the maze. Um, actually, we're going to we're going to check. We're always going to check to see if forever if he's ever touching the black wall, we're gonna want him to start over again. So back, I click my mouse, I click back on my code. But that is and then I'm gonna say events, sorry, control. So we're gonna check forever. So I'm gonna say forever. 
if my mouse is touching, so we're going to use the sense block, is touching the color if, if, if. black, and we did this the other day, and I'll use my dropper. So if he's touching the color black, then we want him to start, start over. So I use my start block. So now when I push my flag, if I run my mouse into a wall, boom, he has to go back to the start. The other thing we're gonna add is we're gonna add another sprite. So I'm gonna do that by adding a sprite down here. We're gonna add, I wanted to add some cheese, but when I look up cheese, all I find is cheesy puffs. So we're gonna add cheesy puffs to our game. There they are. You'll notice that the cheesy puffs and our mouse have different code because they are different. I'm gonna drag my cheesy puffs down here. I might want to do a couple of things. So I'll say events. When my flag is clicked, maybe I'll shrink it down a little bit. So I'll okay. say set size to 50%. And maybe I'll say that I want it, my cheese to always appear in this the place that it is right now. So I'll go into motion and just grab the set X, set Y to and that's the position it's already in. So when I push my flag, my cheesy poofs will always be there and my mouse will always be there. Okay, so that's all the code our mouse need, or sorry, our cheesy puffs need. They need a size and an initial location. So those are the two pieces of code that I'm gonna put under my uh, mouse. I go back into my mouse. And the last thing I'm gonna check for in my forever loop here is one other thing. I'm gonna check to see if it's touching the cheesy poofs. And now it's uh, my code's kind of overlapping, so I'll move things down so I have a little more room. I'll go under sensing, and I'll say if it's touching mouse pointer, but I'm gonna change that from mouse pointer to cheesy poofs. So if it's touching the cheesy poofs, I'll go and I'll have it say, you win. You win for two seconds. And then we'll go back and start over again so they can play again. And that's how it works. So I'll push stop, push my flag, and see if I can get my mouse all the way to my cheesy poofs and win. Here we go. He's almost there. You win. Hooray, and then we get to start all over again. Remember, to make this more fun, you could make your backdrop or your maze even more complicated than mine. So we hope you guys had an amazing time making a rat run through a maze. So remember... To like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. They're backwards, but and then, like and subscribe to our video. Oh yeah, it is backwards. I wonder if we can make it forward. Uh... <laughs> Yeah. I can make my Maybe we can just flip the video. Remember to like and subscribe our video. Remember to add your disc to the video if you want to get more. Goodbye.